I was asked about healing while in a relationship from either current or past issues. Wow. Um, look, I don't have all of the history and the subtle nuances of those relationships. Um, this is speaking specifically to the person that invited me to speak on this. I certainly am not going to know the breadth of experiences for all who may So let me offer this succinctly and get offer some hard work. So if you find that you're in a relationship where there is a need to heal or where you are attempting to heal, and it, let's just say it is important, healing is not occurring or the healing is not working, please know that the relationship is exactly what you need in this moment. If you find that your language and your focus is on the other person, yes, my assumption is that this one is about you know, a partner, or a boyfriend, girlfriend, or a husband, wife, you know, but I know this can extend to ex, especially if you share custody with you all are no longer in a deep relationship. But every time you're around each other, you may feel triggered. We talked about it in a previous clip before a relationship where you're growing apart, and that was also addressed in another. Please know that that relationship and that person, consciously or unconsciously, is doing, behaving in exactly the way that you need them to behave in order for this to become so palpable that you break it. Sometimes we bring generational issues to the table. How men are supposed to be, how women are supposed to be, how church-going people are supposed to behave in relationships, or how only children are supposed to behave in relationships. Or, you know, so if you were um, the middle child and you were used to keeping balance and peace, you may find that in a relationship where there is some tension or it is contentious, you're attempting to play that out to keep the peace rather than taking a look at what the tension is teaching and showing in the mirror. So the healing process just means work that you do with you rather than from you. Hard work is to write down is to write down how you envision your life if you were healed. What does your life look like and feel like healed? Right, on the other side of the healing process, on the other side of the injury or the wound. So my invitation is always in through the nose, out the mouth, and write it, speak it in present tense. I see myself moving freely through life, enjoying work, spending more time with family and friends, or spending quality time that looks like going to museums, that looks like going for walks, that looks like more telephone calls than text messages. Um, I see myself in my relationship with my partner, soulmate, loved one, ex, whatever the relationship is. I see myself take, taking deep breaths when I feel anxiousness or anxiety or anger coming forward. Like, what is it that you see and how do you feel? I feel competent. I feel strong. I feel elated. I feel nurtured. I feel satisfied. Now, please understand the other person has nothing to do with what you see and how you feel. So if you're only gonna feel happy because of something they're doing, welcome to codependency. Maybe we need to do a clip on that one, right? This is how you see your life, how you feel about what you see, and only you are responsible for that. When you write that down, and write it in a couple of sentences, unless you know you just get a divine influx of information and you let it flow, but remember you're writing from here, not here, or you're writing from here, third eye, not here, the intellect. Write down how your life looks from the perspective of already being healed. How does it feel when you envision that life? Then, once you've completed that, write down 
all the things that you find irritating or all the things that you say are not working about your current healing process. If that just seems a little too convoluted, write down all the stuff you complain or bitch about. How about that? Write that down because that's the easiest place from which to work. All the stuff you can gripe about, complain about, bitch about, groan about, write it down. Oh, this person, oh, this relationship isn't, oh, we don't, oh, there's not enough. Write all that down, then go back and take a look at any of those complaints and see if any of those gripes align with what you envision. You may be surprised, some may actually align with it. The ones that don't, see if there's anything to salvage from them, meaning a lesson or some insight or some new awareness that you can apply. If not, immediately release that. You can just draw a line through the stuff that does not align with what you envision. The things that do align, continue to play in those, continue to play with those, continue to nurture those. The other stuff, you're gonna have to make up. Welcome to relationships. There have been times where I've gotten into relationships from the space I was in, not from the space I saw myself in. So if I was coming from dysfunctional, I wasn't speaking being functional. So what I did was I attracted another dysfunctional partner to me only to find out that that was a source of irritation. We could feel that there was a grind. And in my earlier stages, you know, I only ever talked about what I saw. I saw what she was doing or what they were doing or, you know, the people that I was in the group with, they were dysfunctional. Ah, it's not about them. They're playing the role I needed them to play to bring some newfound awareness about how I'm showing up in my life. When I can take that information and apply it in a masterful way, that simply means in a proficient way, then I'll find I don't need to let it go or release it. It releases itself. I've always suggested from my personal experience that people, healthy person and a healthy person can stay together. An unhealthy person and an unhealthy person can stay together. But a healthy and an unhealthy person they'll not stay together for long, if at all. So, if you find that in your current experience there is a healing process afoot and that the healing process has been hindered or the healing process has been negated or the healing process does not seem to be moving fast enough. Now, sometimes you just need to allow time, but sometimes the perception that it's not moving fast enough is because there's something that's hindering it, right? If your healing process process doesn't seem to be working for you. There's no evidence of your healing. I consider healing, you know, going back to the original manufacturer setting, you know, pushing reset. Um, so if you're not back to a place of peace, if you're not back to a place of neutrality, if you're not back to a place of contentment, then you may want to ask yourself, can you ever recall a time being there? Because perhaps what the relationship and the healing process is offering you is an opportunity to break through some generational stuff where perhaps you were brought up in an environment and in an experience where you were always under pressure. And so you never knew what love looked like because healing is only birthed from love. Self-love, self-care has nothing to do with the other person. However, the other person is a wonderful component to the healing process because they're mirroring back to you your thoughts and your feelings and your actions and even your results. And if you don't like any of those things that you see, you can shift them. But the only way to shift them effectively where it maintains and say sustains a long term shift is for you to be clear about what it is that you envision on the other side of healing and speak it as if it is already occurring and feel it as you see it. Then measure, lovingly measure, your current results, your current thoughts, your current feelings against what you see. When they align, you continue down that path. That's your healing path. Where they don't align, you may wanna release those or discard those. That, by the way, is still your healing path. Everything works for our greatest and highest good. We just don't always get that and don't always choose to accept it. So I pray that seeing and feeling what's on the other side of healing, coupled with your willingness to gently 
Look at the feedback from your life, your relationship, your partner, your friend, whatever that relationship is, to look at that and see whether it supports moving forward or away from or hinders progress and then deciding what to keep and what to release. That gets to be your healing process, at least part of it. You've always got me. Call me. DM me, reach out to me, or reach out to somebody else that has already done their own healing work. So they're not speaking from intellect and theory, but they're speaking from application and who can be objective in the experience. So they're not imposing on you, but rather standing with you in the space that you say you envision. I pray this supports your journey. Please be gentle with yourself.